Uh, hey, LeBron, it's Tanya. Um, I was just wondering, you, you tweeted a little bit about leaving your family and how tough that was. Um, can you share a little bit more about how, what that was like and what it's going to be? I mean, they're always with you everywhere you've gone. What, what's it going to be like to be away from them for a little while at least? Yeah, I mean, for the first time, probably since I was uh, maybe 12 or 13, that I had that much downtime without playing basketball or not knowing when we were going to get back on the floor. So, you know, it gave me an opportunity to be home, uh, make up a lot of time that I've lost over the years because I've been um, playing in this league and, and striving to be, um, you know, one of the greatest, if not the greatest, to ever play this game. So, you know, my, you know, sacrificing my family at times, you know, was the, the most challenging and, and, and hardest part about it all. So uh, for the last four months or however long we've been off since March, gave me an opportunity just to be with my kids, be with my wife, uh, spend time with my family and just uh, kind of rejoice in that moment. So uh, leaving Thursday, uh, leaving my family, even my kids, uh, leaving my wife was uh, very challenging, uh, you know, kind of emotional at the same time. Uh, but they, they, they truly understood it, uh, that it was time for, you know, uh, you know, for me to get back to work. And um, so, um, you know, just happy to be uh, back playing a game that I love as well. Hey, LeBron, it's Tim Reynolds. How are you? Good. I'm good. How are you, Tim? Good. Thanks, man. Um, I'm curious how, I mean, it's been so many things happen in the world between the virus and, and the unrest and the protests and all these things that have gone on. I'm curious, at, at any point in that, did you say, we don't need to do this. We don't need to come back. We don't need to play. I don't need to play. It would be an enormous statement if I didn't play. I'm, I'm just wondering if you ever thought about going down that road. No, oh, um, never crossed my mind um, that we did not need to play uh, this beautiful game of basketball that brings so many people together, uh, that brings happiness, that brings joy to the households, um, to so many, uh, you know, families from from kids that's just born where they're, you know, they're born and, and their parents put on a, a, their favorite teams uh, clothing um, to all the way to where um, you're, you're 60, 70, 80 years old and you're just thinking about the game uh, from a sport. And this is all about sport. And I'm happy to be a part of one of the biggest sports in the world. And that's the game of basketball. And I'm happy to have a platform where not only um, people will gain joy from the way I play the game, from the way our team play the game, but for also what I'm able to do off the floor as well. So, um, you know, being able to use my platform, use the NBA's platform uh, to continue to talk about what's going on, because um, I, I would not stop until I see a real change. Uh, for us as um, uh, Black America, for African Americans, for people of color, um, and I also believe I can do both. Though I can, I can bring happiness to a lot of um, homes with the way I play the game and the way the Lakers is going to play the game, and I will continue to to push the envelope and continue to keep my foot on the gas on creating real change for us um, as people of color in America. Hey Melissa. LeBron, Melissa Roland here. Um, you've long talked about just the chemistry that this team has and the brotherhood and camaraderie that you have with the guys. What's it been like to be back around all the guys again? Um, it's like we never left. You know, we pick right up where we left off. Um, you know, it's almost like, you know, you, you have AAU. When I was growing up, we had AAU days. And then, you know, once uh, the AAU season is over, you kind of go back to your respective cities and things of that nature. And then uh, AU season starts back up again that next spring, and it's like you never left. And that's what the kind of the feeling is. You know, we, we got back together. I feel like we've been together for years, even though this is our first year together, but it feels like we've been together for years. And it's just happy to see all my brothers um, and, and doing what we love to do best, like I said. And that's, you know, playing a game of basketball and doing it for one another. Hey, LeBron, it's Bill Orem. Um, I'm wondering just if anything about the, the bubble environment has surprised you once you got once you got to Orlando was there anything about the setup or the process or um, the facilities that that um, you didn't anticipate or you didn't know was going to be there or just has, has caught you by surprise I'm just taking it all in um, for me I'm all about the process um, you know and I'm here for one goal and one goal only and that's to win a championship that's to get better every single day and that's my mindset my mindset is to do that on the floor uh, my mindset off the floor is to continue to to you know give education, continue to give guidance uh, to my community, to communities around the world um, in the inner city about how important our voices is, how important we are, 
and uh, creating change. Um, so um, that is my main focus. I'm here to do nothing else beside that. Let's play the game at a high level, bring a championship back to L.A., hopefully, and also continue to push the envelope on creating change for, for my people. Hey, LeBron, Tanya again. Um, I'm curious, you know, over the past few months, we've seen this huge movement um, against racism and the way that Black people are treated in the justice system and uh, with police. And this is something that you've been talking about for years, obviously. I'm wondering if, as you look at what's happening now, if there's any optimism you feel that this is a time when real change can happen? Yeah, it's funny that you say that because, um, you know, this is the mission I've been on for a long time now. And uh, it's great that now um, a lot of people's ears are opening. Um, a lot of people are understanding. A lot of people are recognizing. Um, a lot of people still don't get it. And a lot of people are still afraid to talk about it. But the racism that goes on in America, especially for my people, people of color, um, um, it, it's, it's still here. And, um, but we have some ears. Uh, we have some ears. And we will continue to, like I said, to push the envelope and, and letting people know that uh, we are human as well. No matter our skin color, no matter how we look, no matter how we sound, um, we don't wanna just be used for our God-given ability as far as our talent on the floor, our talents in the music industry, our talents in the industry as far as clothing and things of that nature. But we also wanna be recognized for our talent with our brains um, because that's what we are, human, just like everybody else. and we. And we, we, we should be treated that way. So um, this has been my mission. Um, and obviously you see that, that what I do in my community with my IPS school, uh, what I've been doing for years in my hometown and, 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 and any place that I go, I try to give back and give that knowledge. So, um, but the good thing now we have more, ears, the more people are listening to what's going on. So that's definitely a plus. <laughs> Mike. All right, Mike is disappeared. Is that it or no we got dave for you dave hey lebron um i think it was summer 2017 where you spent a lot of time with with ronnie uh and his au team and, and traveling and you said it kind of sparked something inside you uh do you see any parallels to now that you guys are kind of living the au experience yourself uh, as teammates down there yeah, yeah it does feel like an au feeling you know everyone you know in the same bubble um everyone's in the same venue um, it has that AAU feeling. It takes me back to when I played, or like you said, the correlation when I spent, I spent a lot of time with Bronny and his team. So um, it definitely has that feeling, um, you know, but uh, that's, a, that's a great feeling. You know, you, it's all about the joy of the game. Um, and it's about the love of the game. And I know I have a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of love and a lot of joy to give to this game. So uh, it should be, it should be a, um, very exciting. Hey, LeBron, can you hear me? I can hear you. Oh, sorry about that. Hey, Mike Trudell here. Hey, LeBron, I wanted to know uh, what you were planning to do uh, with the jersey, um, the, the name on the back, and, and just, uh, you know, how the thought that you put into that. Um, I actually didn't go with a name on the back of my jersey. Um, and it was, um, you know, it's no, no disrespect to the list that was handed out to all the players. Um, I command anyone that decides to put something on the back of their jersey. Um, you know, it's just something that um, didn't really, you know, seriously resonate with my mission, um, with my goal. Um, I would have loved to have um, a say so on what went, what would have went on the back of my jersey. I had a couple of things in mind, but I wasn't a part of that process, which is okay. I'm absolutely okay with that. So um, what I will continue to do, um, you know, off the floor and when I'm talking to you guys and when I'm, you know, everything that I do um, ha has a purpose, it has a meaning. So um, I, I don't need to have something on the back of my jersey for people to understand my mission or know what I'm about and what I'm here to do. So, um, but I commend everybody and I respect everybody that decided to put something on the back of their jersey. I think that's great. And also respect anyone that didn't. Hey, hey, we got one last question for Bill Plasky. Yeah, hey, Lamar, I'm Bill Plasky here. Are you concerned about your health and are you confident the NBA can pull this off safety-wise, health-wise? I believe the NBA and Adam Silver and everyone that had anything to do with this. They, they took all precautionary reasons, measures um, to make sure that we as a, as a league, as as safe as we can be. Obviously, you know, in anything that you do, there can be things that could happen, but we will um, cross that line if it, if the if it happens. Um, but we're doing everything from a league, from every franchise to make sure everyone stays safe uh, during COVID, during this pandemic. 
but I believe in Adam Silver. He, get, he has given me no reason to never not believe him since he took over. Um, and I believe in our franchise that we're doing um, everything that we can to stay safe. So I have no concerns unless concerns was, uh, you know, started to happen and we can be across that bridge if it happens. But I'm here 100 um, percent um, in great health. Um, and, and I'm looking forward to getting back on the floor. All right. Thanks, bro. I appreciate it. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.